Okay, here we go. This is Garrett. I want to do a fair, honest review of the Suicide Squad that kills the Justice League. And I'm going to go over the good parts first. And there is a lot of good in this game. Number one, the voice acting. It's absolutely top notch. It's almost movie quality, in fact. Um, you see, I recognize these little things. Um, maybe these are important to some and not important to others, but the voice acting, every single voice actor did a phenomenal job. I would say especially the lady who plays Waller, the lady who does the voice acting for Harley, um, those two in particular... Next, the cutscenes are off the chart. They're just about movie quality once again. I mean, the game starts off with cutscenes with the Flash, and they're just so good. I mean, they're just so good. The graphics are extremely beautiful. The audio is top notch. I mean, this is a triple A game if I have ever seen one. And I know that the developers of Skull and Bones are calling their game a quadruple A, the first quadruple A game ever. I, I don't understand. You can't compare the cutscenes. You can't compare the voice acting. Uh, in Skull and Bones, the lip syncing doesn't even match. Uh, in this game, when you get up really high in the city and look down on Metropolis, it is a thing of beauty. Now, there is daytime and nighttime in the game, but with different sunlight, different shadows in the game, even my wife, who sits next to me uh, quite often um, at our computers, she said the game is absolutely beautiful. Next, the weapons. They look good. They sound good. They feel good. They feel unique and separate from one another. And I mean, they just did an incredible job. I can't tell you how many games I've played where the guns feel like they're made out of tinfoil. They feel weak and pathetic and there's just no power in them but not in this game the shotgun feels powerful the smg feels weaker with deadly bullets just spewing out of it they did a fantastic job with the weapons the sound the feel of them the special effects i wanted to share with you um right before i start the bad section, I'm going to be talking about different types of addictions to lust. So stay tuned for a few moments. Okay, what else is incredible in this game? The concept. The very idea that we're going to be killing the Justice League. The concept is off the charts. I can't even believe they got away with this. Um, hunting down the Justice League superheroes one at a time. It's one of the best concepts in any game I can think of. And it plays out fantastic. Let's continue. There's a lot more good. This is the best Harley I have ever seen. Her looks... Her attitude, her voice acting, her personality. It's just, it's top notch. Now let me include Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman in this game is an absolute beast. Why don't they make all of the Wonder Womans like this one? She's a beast. I mean, you could not do Wonder Woman and Harley any better then this game has done them. Oh, somebody killed him. I was just about to do that. I wish Wonder Woman 
in the movies was like how she is in this game. It's like the Lord Jesus is really blessing this game. You shouldn't be here. Yeah, we know, lady. Then why are you still in the city? Every minute I waste on you is stolen from the people who truly need my help. I won't be around to save you again. Where else are you gonna go, princess? All the fun is right here. Now let's go to Waller and Lex Luthor. They're incredible. They're both psychotic in their own ways. One of them is a genius, and one of them is a cold-blooded, killer, insane psycho. That's Waller. Huh. You all finished with the billionaire fashion show? Lex Luthor respects us, you know? I think we're gonna be colleagues. Maybe even friends. And he hasn't once threatened to detonate the bombs in our brains. What are we doing here, Waller? We owe Brainiac some bullets. I've had Hack working on how to integrate the Argus and LexCorp Good. networks. Turns out, someone already did that. Uh-oh, they got busted. They're so interesting. So incredible. Every scene with them is like you're watching a movie. I also want to mention... The Superman Wonder Woman one-on-one -on -one fight, that was really good. I mean, that was some incredible gaming there, incredible cutscenes. It's choreographed so she has so well. kryptonite in her it's shield. And it's, I mean, it's just really, really good. Wow, that's so good. And I'm going to finish off the good section with the boss fight against John Stewart, okay. the Green Lantern. Wow. That was probably the best boss fight I have ever played and possibly the best boss fight I have ever seen. That boss fight alone just lifted the game up one notch from already being an incredible game. Now, before we go through the bad, and there is some bad to talk about, if you're battling against lust, pornography, masturbation, etc., etc., all of the lustful addictions, the number one goal you want to work on is humbling yourself. Nine times out of ten, when we're battling lustful addictions, uh, pride is one of the main culprits why the Lord is ordering that we go through these experiences. So to offset the pride, we want to work on humbling ourselves, letting our pride go, crushing our pride, crushing our ego, crushing our self-righteousness, and work on being as humble as you possibly can. And by doing that, you are being Christ-like. Let's go over the bad, because some of the bad is pretty bad. The boss fights. The fight against the Flash. Boring. Hard to follow. Hard to understand. Messy screen. The boss fight against Superman, a little bit better than The Flash, but not as good as it should have been. I mean, you're fighting Superman. This, this, the developers like needed messy. to work on this boss fight for months. They had to get it down right. And the fight's okay, but it's just not good enough. We already mentioned the fight against a Green Lantern. That was incredible. I mean, that was really good. Now, what I'm about to mention is really, really bad. The game forces you to level up each character one at a time. So if you just want to play Harley like, like I did, while you're leveling up Harley, guess what? 
your teammates are not leveling at all. They're getting zero XP. And the game forces you to grind them out. Now, there are some shortcuts to grinding them out, like doing the final uh, Toy Man mission where you can get a lot of XP. But having to level these guys one at a time, that's like pulling teeth out of my mouth. That, that's insanity. Next. There's no guilds in the game, no alliances, and no chat. It's so empty. It's so... I don't want to say the word lonely, but there's no chat at all. No guilds, no alliances. It, it just doesn't make sense. How popular, would this how popular would this game be if we had lots of guilds and guild quests and guild... You know, you Guild really Wars, you can simply slip into another, world another big problem is me. the gear. Very oh, early on in the technology. game, they give you some of the best gear. And what that does is, for the rest of the game, the you're grinding you gear for nothing. You already have the best. The and it makes the hard. Penguin's crafting utility That's useless. It makes the soldier who guards the front door and gives you rewards for shooting down those spaceships that are trying to abduct citizens. It makes those rewards useless because the game already gave you some of the best gear before the end game starts and that's a major flaw in the game. And I'm gonna finish up the bad with something that was really bad. The final boss, Brainiac. It's the same fight as with Instead Flash, of the developers working on that fight for months and months, better, more advanced and better having him being 15 feet tall with his superpowers and his mental abilities and all kinds of technology. Do you know what they did? So you gotta counter him and then attack. They turned him into the Flash and they duplicated another Flash fight. Which was the last thing on earth that I wanted to do. The first flash fight was terrible. And now they duplicated again. Having him run around like, like the first fight. Like level nine or level 10, and having like these that. tornadoes follow you through the map. Like they did oh, in yeah. the first fight. All they did was copy right, it. Let's get him right here. Add right. some different paint and special oh, effects. And, I mean, it's just crazy how they ruined that fight. And something okay. else I want to mention about that boss fight. You know what? The screen is too messy. It's too busy. There's too much going on. You can't follow what to do. You can't follow where to go. It's an absolute cluster of mess. It's a terrible fight. It brought the game down one entire notch and it's also the last fight you're going to remember before you start the wonderful end game there is one more piece of bad that i want to mention you don't really have any freedom doing your technology trees with each character they force you to start on the left side then they give you a point in the middle then they give you a point on the right over and over and over again and they force you to go in order and if you want to put a lot more points maybe on the left bracket maybe on the center bracket you can't it has to all be exactly equal and exactly even and once again i think the developers dropped the ball on that also a lot of us want to greatly fine tune our characters by taking a lot of points out of one section and adding them in another section that happens to be our favorite and in this game you can't and that's that's another negative now let's finish up i am new to the end game but i watched a wonderful video that another youtuber made today on the end game and it looks fantastic you're grinding this incredible gear one step at a time, grinding out abilities one step at a time, getting all these rewards one step at a time. It, the, the enemies are tougher. The missions are tougher. There's new things to do. Um, it's just the end game is really good until season one starts. And 
I did. I was able to play some end game missions today, and they're fun. They're some of them are a little bit different. Some of them are the same, but they're a lot of fun. And the gear rewards are finally, finally giving you gear that you could actually use. Overall, I'll give the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League with all of that good involved and a lot of that bad all mixed together. I'll give them a seven and a half out of ten. It's a really good game. If they just added chat and some guilds, if they just would have spent some more time on the boss fights, this would have been an eight or an eight and a half out of ten because the good is so, so good. Praise God. If you're battling against that in crazy, crazy lust and addictions, let your pride go. Work on humbling yourself. Amen to that.